Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Pennsylvania Association for College Admission Counseling Keystone Virtual College Exploration. This program is a partnership between PACAC and StriveScan for all Pennsylvania students. My name is Liz Frasini. I'm a college counselor at Wyoming Seminary, and I'm also the chair of the College Fairs Committee for PACAC. We're excited to welcome you today and just a few housekeeping tips before we get started. If you have questions for the panelists, please enter them in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen and they'll be monitoring them throughout the session. Your camera and microphone um, are muted and off for the duration of the program. This is a webinar format of Zoom, um, so we'd love to interact with you via the, the Q&A box here um, in, your, in the bottom of your screen. Additionally, you signed up for this session today at the PACAC website at www.pacac.org slash virtual. If you're interested in signing up for additional sessions, you can find the full schedule there from now until November 6th. There will also be a recording of this session posted to that same website and every other session in our program. Um, so again, you can visit www.pacac.org slash virtual. Without further ado, I will turn it over to Car Carnegie Mellon University. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Um, so my name is Alex Hall and I am an assistant director of admission here at Carnegie Mellon. Um, so we're going to be, we have about, you know, 40 to 45 minutes uh, to uh, tell you a little bit about Carnegie Mellon as, as well as do a Q&A. So, you know, if you have questions, uh, my colleagues Maria and Jamie um, are going to, to answer those and I'll let them introduce themselves in a second. Um, but just you know that you know if, if you didn't get your questions answered, um, you know we will have a Q and A session at the end of today's presentation. And so actually, I'm going to go ahead and let uh, Maria and uh, Jamie introduce themselves and talk a little bit about that. Hi everyone, my name is Maria McTie. I'm also an assistant director of admission here at Carnegie Mellon. And um, as Alex said, I am here to help answer uh, questions in our Q&A um, portion there. So uh, make sure you submit your questions as me and Jamie will be answering those. Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Jamie Bowers. I'm also an assistant director of admission here at Carnegie Mellon. I'll be assisting Maria in the Q&A chat feature. So feel free to send any questions our way and we are happy to help. Perfect. Thank, uh, thank you, both of you. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get our presentation up here again. Um, you know, we'll have about you know 25 minutes or a half an hour of information here. Um, you know, maybe less. And uh, if if Jamie and, and Maria have uh, questions to to go over after, that would be fantastic. So, um, so I'm from Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, you can see back in my virtual background. You can see in the presentation. Um, we are in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, so it's really be, it's really nice to be able to talk to Pennsylvanians today. Hope everything is going well uh, for you. I'm wearing a coat uh, because it is a little chilly in, in uh, Pittsburgh, so um, you know I don't know how it is in, in the rest of Pennsylvania for you, but uh, definitely fall is here for us, um, so very exciting. So today, uh, during today's presentation, we're going to talk about a few things, just kind of a high level overview of Carnegie Mellon. Um, but I also want you to come away from this presentation knowing uh, who we are, what makes us unique, um, as well as if you're interested in applying, um, what the application process is going to look like, as well as financial aid. And then, as, as I said, we'll have that Q&A at the end of today's session. So uh, why Carnegie Mellon? Um, one of the things that, uh, so I, I should give you a little bit of context first. I was a student at Carnegie Mellon before I worked here. So this is my fourth year at Carnegie Mellon. Um, one of the things that stuck out to me at the beginning of my um, graduate career here, as well as, you know, keeping going into my staff time here, uh, is just how incredibly interdisciplinary Carnegie Mellon is. We are a school that is known for its engineering and computer science programs. Um, those are among the top in the world, but we're also uh, basically equally renowned for our drama programs, um, other programs in neuroscience. Uh, we are kind of the birthplace of artificial intelligence. You could make a, a claim that we, um, we birthed artificial intelligence here, um, social and decision science, uh, lots of different fields at Carnegie Mellon, um, just beyond um, computer science and engineering. So. Uh, as a Carnegie Mellon student, you have the ability to uh, mix and match. Uh, if you are in the engineering department, you can take 
uh, classes in the in the School of Drama. Um, you can uh, do some biology, you can do some chemistry, you can do some English. Um, and I can personally attest being an English major, how many computer science students walked across the stage at the end of their four years uh, with an additional major in creative writing. Uh, so we definitely want to, um, we want you to make your degree uh, your own um, and come out of here with a unique skill set that nobody else in the world is going to have. So I'll talk about our colleges and programs because that's really the first step to um, you know, figuring out where you want to land for Carnegie Mellon. We have six different undergraduate colleges at this university. Um, so one thing to note when you apply is you are going to apply to a specific college. Um, you can apply to up to two, uh, but depending, even if, if you're in the College of Engineering um, or the School of Computer Science or the Dietrich College of Humanities and Social Sciences, um, there's definitely different paths to the same goal. Um, so you pick a college, but there's still definitely additional majors, minors, and interdisciplinary programs that you can go into um, that really customize that experience for you. So the six colleges, um, the largest by enrollment is the College of Engineering. This has six different uh, engineering fields and you can choose any um, of them after uh, being enrolled in the College of Engineering. So we have material science, we have mechanical engineering, chemical engineering, electrical and computer engineering, civil engineering, and the newest one is environmental engineering. That is brand new this year. Uh, so you can study any of those as well as additional majors in biomedical and engineering and public policy. We don't have a pre-med degree by name, but many biomedical engineers do successfully go on to medical school. Um, any student can uh, can apply to be in the health professions program, which is an advising service that helps you if you're interested in going on to med school or dentistry or vet school. Um, it, it helps set you up and give you the resources that you need to successfully do that. Um, but yeah, many biomedical engineers participate in that um, to great success. Again, I'm going to go horizontal across. You can sort of see my, my hand before it disappears in the virtual, virtual background. Uh, the College of Fine Arts is the next school I'm going to talk about. Uh, this is home to five different programs that are either conservatory or professional style programs. The more conservatory style ones are going to be the schools of drama and music. So you are going to be studying primarily music or primarily drama. Um, so there's a little, the trade-off is there's a little less flexibility than in other programs, but you definitely do get um, some rigorous, intense, and rewarding um, time in those programs. Um, and then we have the kind of more professional schools of art, architecture, and design um, that are you know, just like drama and music, um, geared to give you the skills that you need to succeed in, in your creative and professional life after you leave Carnegie Mellon. Our Dietrich College of Humanities and Social Sciences is the largest, not by enrollment, but by the variety of degrees that you can have. There are over 60 majors and minors available to choose from. Um, and there's interdisciplinary programs that exist within this college as well, like our neuroscience program between biology and psychology, um, and then our information systems program, which is kind of like computer science, but it has a uh, more humanities focus um, and more of a data science focus. And similarly to our computer science program, it's one of the highest ranked information systems programs in the world. The Mellon College of Science is, uh, you know, speaking of, of Mellon, uh, College of Science, we have biology, physics, chemistry, and math. Um, this is a, a college that has lots of opportunities to do research, but you can do research in any college, um, even the College of Fine Arts. There's lots of opportunities to do so, even as a first year student. Um, but because of the intense lab work and um, just kind of how, uh, how hand in hand research goes with these Mellon College of Science fields, um, our MCS, uh, Mellon College of Science students, about 70% of them do research at some point during their undergraduate time. The School of Computer Science and the Tepper School of Business, I'll talk about both of those together. Those are the smallest colleges by enrollment. Um, and they're, they're not colleges, they're schools. So you can see they're a little bit smaller. Um, but they, uh, they both have an intense emphasis on math and analysis. Um, so if you really like math, but you're not necessarily sure if you want to go into a math degree or a physics degree 
um, computer science or business could actually be a good fit. Um, our Tepper School of Business specifically actually is one of the more unique business schools in the country because it has that analytical focus. Um, so you, you also will have the opportunity to uh, take cl classes and get real world experience in marketing, entrepreneurship, um, accounting, finance, things like that. So it's not all math, but it is a lot more uh, analytical than other programs across the country. And then the school computer science has a lot of variety in the programs that it has uh, from artificial intelligence, as I said, um, Newell and Simon are, are the um, kind of the two founders of artificial intelligence and they both worked here. We have a building named after them. Um, so we have a pretty robust infrastructure when it comes to artificial intelligence. Um, you can get a major in that, um, as well as our computer science department, uh, which is our largest by enrollment in the school of computer science. And then um, computational biology, which takes computer science and biology, so like genome sequencing, things like that. Um, and then our newest uh, major is human computer interaction in the School of Computer Science. So those are our six colleges, but as I said, there's lots of paths and points where you can cross and mix and match. Um, information systems, neuroscience, computational finance, economics, these are all degrees that exist within multiple colleges. But we also have programs like the BXA program, which is an interdisciplinary arts and either humanities, science, or computer science program. So you apply to the College of Fine Arts, but you can also um, apply to another college and have just one degree, so it's not an additional major, um, and it's fused between that art field that you choose and then whatever other field you choose. Um, we have ID8 minors, which is a group of nine different minors that combine design, art, and technology. So if you're interested in uh, combining textile or fashion design with electrical and computer engineering, um, I should say electrical engineering more, uh, soft technologies is, is a, a good fit for you. Game design, audio engineering, we have that as well. So that's a lot about the academics and um, kind of the structure of that. Uh, I wanna talk about the student community next. So we are a medium sized university um, and it's a, it's a research university. We have about 6,500 um, undergraduates and about that many graduate students. So, you know, with, with, with a medium sized university, you definitely have lots of needs and lots of diverse perspectives. Um, one of the great things about Carnegie Mellon is that you're going to be meeting students from all across the country and all across the world. Um, so, you know, a lot of Pennsylvania students uh, for sure, but um, definitely a lot of students from, from across the country. So um, that can be really exciting. We have residence halls on campus. We have 28 different residence halls that are non-Greek affiliated. So we, I think, have about 17% of our students are affiliated with Greek life, you know, fraternities, sororities, um, things like that. Um, so, you know, they, they definitely have their own residence halls, but, you know, if you're not interested in Greek life, um, there's 28 different uh, residence halls on campus. Many of those are available to first year students. Um, and, you know, there's different people uh, that you can meet in those communities. Um, we don't have specific residence halls for identity groups or for honors programs or anything like that. Uh, but, you know, some, we'll, in some residence halls, we'll have like specific wings or um, common areas for those programs. So, you know, if, if you are in our quantitative social science uh, scholars program, which is for Dietrich College students who are um, interested in, in studying the, the social sciences um, more quantitatively, um, there's a wing in one of our residence halls where you can meet other people um, in that same program. So, you know, definitely we want to give you the freedom and the choice to um, to make your own way at Carnegie Mellon, but um, definitely putting you in close contact with people who uh, have similar um, interests and maybe different perspectives. Uh, and that goes beyond the residence halls. Say it goes beyond the residence halls, but I'm going to talk about them a little bit more, actually. Um, residence halls have resident assistants, which you find at, at many colleges, but they also have house fellows here. Um, so these are staff members that are attached to a specific residence hall or group of residence halls. So you definitely get wide ranging support um, when you're living here on campus. Um, and then, you know, that goes beyond um, living on campus as well. So uh, a lot of our student organizations, um, you know, the, they're wonderful places to be and to find groups of friends. Um, we have over 400 and they include organizations like 
Scotch and Soda, which is our, uh, I believe it's 100 years old. It's a um, drama club for non-drama students. And that's where, if you're familiar with uh, the musical Pippin um, by Stephen Schwartz, he also did Wicked and Godspell. Pippin actually premiered for Scotch and Soda. Um, Stephen Schwartz is a Carnegie Mellon grad, so um, definitely have a history there. Uh, we have clubs that are specifically for our probably marquee student event, Buggy. Um, so CIA is, uh, is a student organization that uh, puts together a buggy team. If you don't know what buggies are, um, well, so if you're from around Pittsburgh, buggies are shopping carts. That's, that's what they're called. I'm not sure if that's the same for all of Pennsylvania. Um, so we used to race shopping carts around campus. And now we have, because it's Carnegie Mellon, these like aggressively engineered um, carbon fiber torpedoes that go around at 30 miles an hour. And then there are people who are actually in them and some other people who race them. Um, it's a super fun event. So you'll have organizations that put together teams for that. Um, and really think the common theme is that anybody can participate. And that goes to um, some of our other organizations as well. We are an NCAA D3 school. So, you know, while uh, we definitely have a very competitive um, conference that we're in and division that we're in, the UAA um, within D3, uh, academics do come first. So uh, you can definitely, you know, catch a game, catch a sports game. But, you know, if, if you are interested in being a varsity athlete, um, that is definitely a pathway uh, for, for like tryouts or things like that. Uh, but we also have clubs and intramural sports too. Um, and then other support services, uh, we have the, uh, the Center for Student Diversity and Inclusion that you can see on your screen there. Um, they help and support people who are, are coming from Carnegie Mellon who are, who are underrepresented in the population. So, you know, people who um, maybe are the, the first in their family to go to college, um, people from different identity groups, um, affinity groups. Uh, we definitely have a, a a home for you here and, and uh, support systems like the Tartan Scholars Program, um, which actually grew, it doubled in size this year. Um, and I am a mentor on that program. It's for students that um, are, you know, maybe they don't have as many resources as other Carnegie Mellon students. So if you're wondering how to apply, here's how. So the, uh, we are a common application school. Um, so you would just go ahead and submit your common application um, and select Carnegie Mellon as one of your choices. Uh, for early decision, um, that is uh, November 1st and regular decision is January 4th, I should say, <laughs> not January 4th. Um, that's a mistake there. Um, the difference between early decision and regular decision. Early decision uh, is if Carnegie Mellon is your number one choice, and you know you want to, um, you, you will enroll if you were admitted, um, early decision is probably the better plan for you. That allows you to apply earlier and get your decision earlier. Um, regular decision, you would apply by January 4th and get your decision back um, around late March or by April 1st. There is no admission advantage to applying one way or the other. We admit students at about the same rate for both. So um, because you're applying early doesn't necessarily give you a leg up in the admission process. It just means that um, you get to know earlier. Um, an early decision is a binding agreement. So, you know, make sure that you are ready to commit to Carnegie Mellon if you do apply early decision. For December 1st, um, deadlines for drama and music, you know, we want to make sure that you have enough time to schedule your interview or your audition. Um, so uh, that's why that's there. When you're applying to Carnegie Mellon, uh, we are a highly selective institution. So that means that many students, uh, most students, in fact, who apply to Carnegie Mellon are admissible, but we can only take a certain amount because we only have room for a certain amount of students. Um, what that means is that we look at many different parts of your application in order to figure out not only are you a good fit for Carnegie Mellon, but is Carnegie Mellon a good fit for you? You know, we definitely understand um, and, and you know, because you're attending this, um, this event, um, that there's lots of different colleges out there. Um, and so some of them might be a better fit for you than others. Um, so if, you're, if you know Carnegie Mellon is a good fit for you and you want to communicate that, um, there's lots of places in the application where you can do that. Uh, we look at both academic and non-academic factors. So um, grades, the, the classes that you're taking, 
um, your, your letters of recommendation. Those are things we look at for academic preparation, but that's not the whole piece of the pie. Uh, we definitely will look at non-academic factors as well, like extracurricular involvement, your essays. We do require the common application essay as well as uh, our three supplemental short answer questions for Carnegie Mellon specifically. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, are, are you, do you feel like you are a good fit? Are you demonstrating that you're gonna be a good fit for this university? Throughout all of that, context is extremely important and it has probably not been, uh, now is, is probably the, the most important it has ever been um, because we live in, in um, the time of COVID, right? So there are so many things that have changed about uh, classes, you know, whether it's pass fail grades, whether it's not being able to do the extracurriculars you wanted, whether it's you know, completely not being able to take the classes that you wanted uh, because your school is online or, or you know, whatever other uh, upheaval has, has gone on. We definitely want to keep that context in mind. And we're going to be very, um, I guess, just very careful and conscientious when it comes to that. So, um, you know, the, the grades, the um, curriculum, test scores, if you choose to submit them are important, but we're always going to look at those in terms of context. You know, where are you? Where are your peers at? Um, what opportunities did you have and did you not have? And we're going to use that for, um, for our decision. Let's see what time we have here. Um, yeah, we have a few minutes left. That's great. So let's talk about financial aid. Oh, actually, before I go to financial aid, I should say, I mentioned test scores if you choose to submit them. We are a test optional university this year. So you can choose to submit your SAT or ACT, but you do not have to submit them in order to be considered for admission here. And if you choose not to submit them, that is not gonna negatively impact your application. Um, so we would just look at these other academic factors and just leave off the test scores altogether. All right, now we can talk about financial aid. So uh, we are a need-based financial aid institution and we are committed to meeting your family's demonstrated need. So we do not give merit-based financial aid. Uh, so that's financial aid for test scores, grades, essays, things like that. We give financial aid based on your family's demonstrated need, their ability to pay. Um, and we give it in a couple of different ways. Grants, which is money that you don't have to pay back. Loans, which you do and then student employment, which is like federal work study money. Um, that's not automatically set up for you. That's something that you would have to go out and apply for. But um, you know, that, that work study money um, is, is guaranteed on your financial aid offer um, you know, up to a certain dollar amount um, that you can get from, from working those jobs. Um, one thing that since we are a need-based institution, uh, we definitely cannot guarantee what your financial aid is gonna be right now, um, but um, we definitely can, can give you a better estimate of it than if we gave need and merit-based um, money. So uh, I would recommend going to the net price calculator and you can see that on your screen here, but if you, know, if you don't have time or um, the ability to copy it down, you can always go to our website. Um, if you just go to admission.cmu.edu, I believe you should be able to find it. It's under financial aid and affordability. Um, the net price calculator is a great way to give you uh, an estimate of what your financial aid is going to be. And the more information you can put in there, like tax information, excuse me, tax information, the, the more accurate it's going to be. Um, so this can be a really good first step to figuring out, is Carnegie Mellon going to be financially feasible for me and my family? In terms of submitting financial aid, we require the FAFSA and the CSS profile. So the FAFSA is a document that you may have heard from from other colleges. It's a free application for federal student aid. Usually all colleges require this if um, you're going to qualify for, for federal financial aid. The CSS profile is less common, but we also require it to see where your family's demonstrated need is or where your, your family's financial situation is. Um, so make sure to submit both. Uh, the CSS profile does cost money. The FAFSA does not. The CSS profile, I believe, costs $50. Um, per institution that you submit it to. But if you go to their website, um, so if you just search, uh, it's, it's through the College Board. So if you just search College Board CSS profile, um, you can see what might qualify for a CSS profile waiver. If you do qualify for a, pro, a CSS profile waiver, just let us know, um, email us and um, 
we will honor that um, if you do qualify. So applying for financial aid could be free, as well as applying for um, admission if you uh, qualify for a common application waiver. If you um, submit the financial aid, those the CSS profile and FAFSA by November 1st, for if you're applying early decision, uh, or by February 15th, if you're applying regular decision, uh, that allows us to get a financial aid offer to you relatively, relatively quickly after we get you your admission decision. Uh, but if you apply after these dates, that is in no way going to change the amount of money, um, the, the financial aid offer itself. It just might delay it a little bit, um, but we are not a first come first served financial aid institution whatsoever. I have a couple more minutes here. So I wanna give you some important financial aid resources. Um, so I talked about the FAFSA, you can see that below. Um, so the FAFSA is definitely important to check out um, so that you know how to do that. Um, but you know, if you want more information about the CSS profile and some of the other financial aid um, policies and, and procedures, uh, you can go to our website. Um, so I believe, so admission.enrollment.cmu.edu um, will also get you to our website. Um, so the applying for aid page has some good information there. Uh, we do honor uh, outside scholarships as well. Uh, so while we don't, the, the university does not provide merit-based aid, other institutions or, or other organizations, I should say, do. Um, so two great places that have a lot of uh, scholarship um, information and databases, uh, FastWeb and scholarships.com um, are, are two good places to get started. And then, you know, feel free to email us if you want more information about uh, where to find outside scholarships. That's basically it that I have. Um, you know, again, we'll go to, to Q&A here in a second, um, but I do want to give you my contact information. Um, it's just down there. Uh, so again, my name is Alex Hall. Uh, my contact information is, is amhall at andrew.cmu.edu. I'll leave this, um, this slide up here um, so that you have, um, you know, that information. And, you know, feel free to download any of the brochures that, that we have on our website. Um, as well as if you want to join our mailing list too, um, that can be a good way for us to keep in contact with you. But uh, Jamie and Maria, that's all I have. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. Thanks, Alex. Um, I, we really only have two questions that um, we're going to address. So Maria, I'll go ahead and take the first one if that's all right. Um, a common question that we can get is, you know, can you change your major, you know, across colleges once you're a student at Carnegie Mellon? So I'm happy to take that one. So the answer that I'll usually provide to students is it's a possibility, but it is never guaranteed. Um, so we never really want students to, you know, come into Carnegie Mellon thinking, oh, you know, I'm trying to get into one program, but I'm going to apply here. Definitely apply to whichever program you are most interested and passionate about. If once you're a student here and you're like, you know what, I think I might be changing my mind, it certainly is a possibility. It's just a process that you'll need to work with your academic advisor on. Um, they'll basically check on one and a combination of three things. The first one being your prerequisites. You know, have you taken prerequisites that will make you academically successful in that, you know, um, program? We would never want to throw a student into, um, for example, our computer science program that's never taken a calculus class before. The second is, you know, academically, how are you doing at Carnegie Mellon? Like, could you handle a major change? And then the third thing that typically can sometimes be the biggest obstacle when it comes to, you know, switching majors across colleges is space within that program. This can vary on program and college from semester to semester if they have space to take internal transfer students. Uh, we don't always know that. It just kind of depends on that semester and how many students they have. Um, so that can vary. I can let you know that typically our two colleges where space can be the biggest issue is our College of Engineering and our School of Computer Science. So I do like to mention that. So again, definitely a possibility, but never guaranteed. Um, so yeah, I hope that that was helpful. Yeah, thanks, Jamie. And the second question um, that we got was, can I double major at Carnegie Mellon? Um, and this is uh, somewhat similar to 
um, switching colleges and that there are a couple things that you need to think about when you're interested in double majoring. It's not impossible to double major. Um, it is a lower percentage of students who actually do complete a double major. I believe it's less than 20% of our students that do a double major. Um, so it is not like super common. Um, and it's going to depend on what you're interested in double majoring in. Um, you know, if you're interested in computer science and College of Fine Arts double major it might not be feasible. Uh, you're probably not going to finish in four years. There's definitely better ways to, to combine those interests. Um, and that's why Alex had mentioned there's tons of minor opportunities, tons of opportunities for you to take um, just different courses or elective courses throughout all of the colleges. And that's what makes Carnegie Mellon a great place to be is that it is so interdisciplinary. Now, if you're interested in a double major, you need to figure out, you know, is there room in your schedule? And are you qualified to pick up that double major? As well as is there space in that program for you to have a second major and be, a, be another major in, in a student in that program? So there's a, all of those factors that kind of go into it. That's something that you can work with your academic advisor once you're here on campus about, you know, talking to them and thinking about a, an additional major or a double major. Now I will say um, double majoring within the same college is a little bit easier. Um, so like within our engineering school, for example, we have a couple additional majors that are easier to add on because they're already within engineering. Um, a lot of those core requirements you're already taking. It's also easier to double major within, you know, uh, Dietrich or um, uh, Mellon College of Science um, because of those same core curriculum uh, requirements that you're going to have to take. So it, it is going to depend on what you're interested in studying. It's not impossible. And our, if, you're, if it's something that you really want to do, most academic advisors are going to, you know, support you in that. So, um, so yeah, possible, but things to think about. I think that is all of the questions that we really had, Alex. Um, if you want to close it out, I think we're good. Sure, absolutely. Um, one last thing that I would say, because I'm seeing this other question come in. Um, if you want to learn more about the health professions program, uh, we have information. Um, so I, I believe it's hpp.cmu.edu. Um, um, so that's hpp.cmu.edu. But um, yeah, I mean, you can, you can find all this information definitely on our brochures as well. So again, I encourage you to, to do that. But uh, yeah, that's, that's it for, for me. And uh, thank you. Jamie and Maria for answering those questions and thank all of you for uh, joining us today. I do appreciate it. Well, thanks so much everyone from Carnegie Mellon University. This was a great session. And uh, to wrap up, I'd just like to thank all the attendees for joining us live. There will be a quick four question survey at the conclusion of the session and we'd appreciate your feedback. Also, if you'd like to sign up for additional sessions or view the recording of this session and future sessions, you can go to www.pacac.org virtual. Have a great day, everyone.